Hello and welcome to Project Home DIY. I'm Christine, the owner and curator of your Project Home projects. So glad to have you here with us this month. We have not in October like we did last year and brought those back because they were such a hit, but we have Owltober this year because last September or this past September, last month, we had a tiered tray and that was like everybody's we talked about that so much within our VIP group and really wanted to get that to you guys. And now we want to get you some decor to put on it. So we have Owltober. I can't leave your trays without anything on them. So I have to design a box for you guys to be able to make and use for on your trays. So with that being said, you guys have done an amazing job already on your September, uh, um, the tiered tray projects. They're beautiful. I love seeing all the variations all the decorations you guys like way outdo me you're amazing so keep those up make sure you keep sharing those in the vip group we love to see your completed projects and talk about variations this month holy cow like we have a ton of different things we can do here a ton so let's get started i'm not really going to, going to go in much of an order um other than i do know i need to start with um painting the base color on these wood pieces so that that can dry and then I can do my decoupage and then I can stencil. So I do need to make sure that I do those pieces first. Um, you'll notice my paper looks a little bit different. You are lucky. You have the nice double-sided paper. I couldn't get that in time for me to be able to do the video so I had to print it off mine and mine look like pink. So yours are much nicer brown tone. If you see a different color looking, it is the truth. Mine does look a little funky, but I'm going to make do with it. It will be only used on, I'm going to just decoupage on the owls. So that's where um, I will decoupage. There's so many possibilities of what you can do with this kit. It's unbelievable. You could decoupage on this guy and then use an X-Acto blade and cut little slits. Like, I mean, there's so many. So I'm excited to be able to share my interpretation and also get to see your guys' interpretation in the VIP group. All right, with, let's see, the very first thing I'm going to um, paint my base color so they have a second to dry. Um, make sure you do have your hot glue gun plugged in because we will need it for the garland. And like, seriously, are these not the cutest little owls you've ever seen? And the pumpkins, like, I just love them. So I had to have them together. I needed owls and I wanted pumpkins and I wanted it all. So all the cute little things in one. So, all right, let's get to painting our <clears throat> base color pieces. You will use the paints that were given to you in your starter kit. So if you are new with us, welcome. It's your very first month. You should have gotten your starter kit shortly after you subscribed. Um, and it has the 10 color Project Home DIY paints in them. I will be using a few of these colors, so I'm just gonna take them out so I can see what I got to work with. Um, and my paint tray, I gotta dump all my cute little furling wheels off. Get those all over there. Got my paint tray. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna start with the sign. And I think I'm going to go with alpaca, so a little bit of a tan color here. I like, oh, looks like a Hershey kiss. Look at that. How cute. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to go with alpaca and the tan for the first color. Remember, these are antiquing stain finish colors, so they are not meant to be fully pigmented. You are meant to be able to see the wood through. Because in the end, like, we work so hard to get that wood grain finish color back through. So, why not just create a paint that's not going to give you that full coverage? And we won't have to work so hard for that wood grain color to come back through. So, as you can see, I'm just going to paint this little dude. Um, I do paint the sides. I don't know if I'll paint the back. I may um, 
because it is a tiered tray, so it kind of is visible from all sides. So unless I can keep it really nicely nice, I think I, I'm going to skip the back. And if you do skip the back and get a little bit on the edge, just sand it off with your sanding block after it's dry. So you can clean up the edge and make it nice. So I kind of just slop all the paint on all sides first um, and then go one direction over the whole thing one time. Gives me that even look, finished, nice and smooth. Okay little trick which if you guys have been with me for a few months which are some of you crazies that have been with me for like I don't know almost from the beginning so thank you I'm so glad to have you with us but little tip I always use I always use a little space heater put my stuff in front of it dries in like five minutes so you'll hear a little hum in the video that's the heater if you want to know what it looks like it's this big ugly thing Look at that, it's not cute at all. But this is the best one I've ever found because look, it rotates. So I love it, um, it works great. Okay, so I'm sorry if you hear that now. That's the little humdinger going, so sorry. All right, now my owls, <clears throat> I'm going to decoupage my paper prints on them. And so, oh, I wish my papers weren't pink. Oh terrible. I think that guy's going there. This guy can go here. This guy can go here. Okay. So I kind of want a background paint, which I didn't do any pinks in my paint. So I don't have any pinks to match this pink paper. I can't wait to use the real stuff. You guys are lucky. Um, I, I'm just going to stick with alpaca, I think, because it's kind of a warmer Smoke is too cool, cream, too cool. Alpaca is my best filter, I guess. I'm gonna use it for the owls and the tags too. So for the owls, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna paint the back and the sides because the front or one of the sides, I'll decoupage. And that way, if you want to rotate them around and just have a painted owl with nothing on them, you can. Um, also think about their little wings and eyeball parts. We'll have to paint those. I might have to do them after I figure out what colors. Okay, for the tag, I think I'm gonna do a dark brown. Um, yeah, bark, I'm gonna use bark. I didn't even wash my brush between either. It's okay, it'll work. Okay, I have all their little wingies out and since I do have the brown, I think I'll paint a little bit on the wings.
painting so far. Um, these little dudes, I will probably, of course, do white for the eyeballs. Oh man, you think I'd have a better paintbrush? Looks like my kids got to my paintbrushes. Wow. Well, I guess that's what we get to use this time because that's all that's over there. Okay, I think I'm gonna paint some white. I like this because they're not gonna be like super bright, stark white. Um, because I'm not doing several layers or coats of paint, just one. <clears throat> I think little green noses would be fun. Right, just get the stuff out of the dryer here. All my little dudes are dry. My tag still needs a moment. <clears throat> okay, those are dry, but I'm going to, let's see, what do I want to do? I could do the decoupage, how about that? Let's do that. All right, so to decoupage, we've kind of done this technique in the past a little bit. <clears throat> You may be familiar with it. It's pretty simple. It's very fun. For the paper, what you would do is take um, whichever portion of the paper that you like, put your owl on it, and like match up two of the edges. And then I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife. And actually I'm just gonna cut right around him. Oops. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, oops, didn't cut very well. I will sand off edges and make it much more refined. Okay, <clears throat> so that is his basic shape and size right there. So you have lots left over too. You can do them all the same. I wanted to give you lots of paper so you can make that choice. Um, this guy right here. little guy in my pinkest paper just so you can have the least but you guys will have brown I 
Okay. And then the decoupage technique is super easy. You can take any kind of glue. There is a certain decoupage glue. We've sent glue with a lot of our projects in the past, so you may have some. Any kind of sil or Elmer's glue, any kind of school glue, any of that will work. Um, you're just going to put a thin layer of the glue down, and I'm gonna rub it in with my finger. Might be too much. And spread out towards the edges. Obviously, if you drag your finger with glue along an edge, it'll create a pile, which you don't want a pile. So make sure it's cleaned up, a nice thin layer. And then I'm gonna take this paper and just stick it on, just like that. And it's going to want to lift. Obviously glue has liquid in it. Just set it down on a surface, face down. So, or else the edges will curl. So set it face down for a little while, just like that. And repeat those steps doing your second and third owl. Okay, the pieces of paper have the glue on them. They are still a little bit wet. I will put them in the dryer. Again, my little trick. Go ahead and stick them in the dryer. Um, that glue will dry quick. Okay, my tag is done. Got that out. These all look really good. They're drying. Okay, last sort of thing to build, and then we have to stencil. So it goes right there, um, would be the little garlands with those little owls that are so cute. Okay, so you have all of your beads. You can decide how to, um, how you want to put them in any sort of pattern, do whatever you would like. And I will keep mine spaced out so they will not be like side by side with each other on uh, the string. I do want them spaced out. There is a little white plastic needle that you will use. My trick with that little dude is get it threaded and then Take your hot glue gun and put a teeny tiny little dab of hot glue right there to keep that thread in there, just a tiny bit. Don't make it too big or else you're going to have a hard time getting your glue through. So that's why I'm rotating it like this because it kind of squishes my glue, but that will hold my string on. Okay, my string is tight now. Did you see, I did lick my fingers before I touched the hot glue. That's another one of my favorite tricks because um, they won't, it won't stick if you lick your fingers first. So you can know, you notice that there are only three owls and they are gray, tan, and gray. Um, make sure that, um, or you do whatever you want with it, but I'm going to lay out my pattern first, just so I know um, what I want to do and how, what order to go in. So I'm just going to mess with that really quickly. And you can lay out yours as well, but you can also watch mine so you'll know kind of how I set mine up too.
<clears throat> okay, I have mine set up how I'm going to string it. And my string is ready to go. So this is the way it's going to work. These felt ones, they kind of stay in place of where you put them. So that is good. Um, but the rest of the beads, they're kind of big. So um, keep that in mind with the hot glue. That's where your hot glue is going to come in. And even on this little pumpkin, I pulled out plenty of string. I know that's not, that's gonna be plenty. Um, just make sure you did pull out enough string. And I'm going to put a tiny dab of hot glue. You can't even see it, but it is there. It's gonna stop the string from pulling back through that pumpkin dude. And I'll have to glue every time, except for these beads, I'm just gonna put on felt guys are a little more work but they'll go okay so I have some of the beads on and now this is where I will spread them out just a little tiny bit and put a dab of hot glue. So here's my first one. I'm going to dab a hot glue in there and set it down and let it sit. This one, I'm gonna do the same and let it sit. This felt one stays in place pretty well but I'm still gonna tack it just a tiny bit. Okay. So we're going to repeat that several times. All right, I got everything strung and now I'm just gonna go through and make a big long section here where I can space everything out and let it dry with the hot glue or cool, I guess.
my garland is all finished and since I did glue the beads on the ends I don't need to tie anything so I can cut this tied end off well I think I want to I have an extra wooden bead I'm going to put him down here to finish with one I'm going to start with one Oof. if I can get it in in there we go Love it. Extra string. That's all good. Okay. Those little dudes are there. Just gonna move that up a little bit. One owl's facing one way, two, it doesn't even matter. When I get it on the tray, I'm gonna place everything exactly where I want it to sit anyways. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off and we can finish these pieces. All right, actually, before we do that, let's stencil because then that'll be done. Okay, we have um, given you guys the stencils, several other projects. You may be familiar with them. They may, you may be brand new to them. These are reusable mesh stencils. They're awesome, and I did say reusable. So when you are done using them, you literally just wash this mesh off. Make sure that the meshy part where the paint goes through is clean. Other than that, um, the washing part doesn't have to be that thorough. Just make sure the mesh is clean because obviously if it's not, paint dries in the mesh and you can't use, reuse it in that section. And then you just re-stick it to the backing once it's dry. This will get sticky again. Um, they are super cool. So they are reusable. You can use these several times. You can make lots of stuff. Um, with that being said, stencils can be tricky. The only reason that they can be tricky is because of leaking. And that's the only problem we've had with them, with people, but we're kind of figuring out. So I've stenciled probably, I can't even tell you, I've been doing this for like 12 years. Our first business was Mason Creations and we built custom handmade home decor and wood signs for people. Um, so I've been using stencils for a long, 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 long time. I can't even, um, I'm not a very good teacher about them because it's so like second nature to me just to do it. But we've been figuring out different things that why they um, bleed. And one of the reasons is because when we paint a surface like this with any sort of paint, there's moisture in paint, moisture brings up grain in the wood. So with that being said, make sure that you sand your pieces of wood, anything you stencil, very good, make them smooth. So let's sand. Okay, another reason why the stencils bleed is because the surface is dirty. So make sure that I find cotton, like my pants, and that's why I used to be rubbing on my pants. It gets it off really well. Or like something microfiber, it gets off dust really well. But just clean that dust off. Clean, clean. So make sure it's very clean. And then you're ready to stencil. So keep this backing. Stick on your stencil. You can follow the um, bottom cut pieces of the stencil to guide you kind of to keep a straight line. Okay, third reason why stencils sometimes bleed because they're not pressed down good enough. So make sure that you really press them down. 
The only reason they're leaking is because something is allowing paint to get in, into the sticky part where it shouldn't be. So we have to eliminate all those reasons. And I'm going to use the white because I want to make sure that my words stand out really well on that. So I'm going to use cotton. Another reason why paint bleed or um, stencils bleed is because the paint's too thin. Okay, so you don't want to use watery paint. You don't want to water down your paint, and you don't want to use. You know how you go back and forth and rinse your paintbrush and then use it again and then stick it in your paint. You got to be really careful that there's not a ton of water left in your brush when you are stenciling. Okay, so then we put a nice smooth coat on and now we can peel it off. And there it is, not one leak. So follow those steps 100% and you will have good stencils. I have a gajillion of these stencils, so I'm not going to wash it, but what you would do is take this stencil, put it in like a tray of water, wipe all this off, let it dry face down and then when it's dry, stick it back on the white backing and then you can reuse it. Um, you can even redo and do it on the back if you want it to be visible from both sides. Okay, so let's do the owl home and I am gonna use the dark brown. And this stencil is made, oh, make sure that you are putting your stencil on the right direction. This goes down because if you don't, then you'll not be happy at the end. Um, these stencils are made for this block, so it should um, fit side to side exactly. And I'm just trying to figure out where I want that line in my welcome, which I think I'm going to go right there. So it doesn't interfere too much with my word, but it's going to, but that's okay. Okay, and my home is nice and straight. I just checked it by going like this and I see that the bottom of the H to the bottom of the board is about the same as the E. Okay, press it down firmly. And I'm going to use the dark brown, I'm gonna use bark. No. Do you know what would be really pretty? Green. It's very pretty. Because of the orange or uh, olive branches that we have. So that will be worth perfect. Here I am, terrible at rinsing my brushes again. Okay. Here's the green. Okay, notice the welcome is in a trough of, um, there is a space there. <clears throat> Oops, and I did just get it on the wood up top. But I'll wipe it off before I pull the stencil off. Just don't put a blob of paint in that trough. If it does happen to fill, we can clean it out with an X-Acto knife after. done and I'm going to wipe this off the top. I've got a tiny bit right there. I'm going to wipe it before. Okay, now I can peel. <gasps> Look at that color! <gasps> so cute! Okay, I did get a little bit in the trough. Um, I don't think it looks that bad. I may just break up a couple of the lines right here in the L and the C maybe a tiny bit, the O. Ah, oh, I'll just do them all, clean them all out. I'm just barely scraping. Okay, 
that's it. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. So cute. Oh, I don't know if you guys are first joining us. So I say this almost in every video, but I design these projects in my mind and then I actually don't even put them together until I do this video with you. So this is literally the first time I have put this garland together. It's the first time I put anything together. I don't know if that's bad planning on my part. Like maybe I should be a little bit more prepared, but I feel like if I can do it first time, you guys can do it first time. So um, I kind of like just go with it, let you know. All right, last part, we got to sand off our edges of our little owls. This is super easy. Just sand until the paper comes off. This is my favorite look because it like creates a worn edge right there. And I think it looks so adorable. So I hope you do too, because that's the one way I decoupage. Okay, look, so cute. And then we gotta put those little dudes together. Oh my gosh, so cute, you guys, I love them. Okay, now we have all these little ditties to put on. So the big eyes, you can get kind of funky with these if you want. You don't have to go perfect. Um, or make them wonky, whatever. You wanna do fun little owls. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I think no matter what you do, they're gonna be cute. So don't even be afraid. Okay, let me finish up these dudes. And there it is. There is your October 2021 Owltober box. So with your tiered tray, you can cut the wires off these guys a little bit, or I left them long because you might want to wrap them around something to make them stay in place. So whatever you want to do with those, but they kind of just nestle in and around all your little dudes. And so does your garland. So this will go all up and around on your tiered tray. 
I hope you all have enjoyed your Project Home DIY. Join us next month where we haven't quite decided yet. We're on our way into Wonderland. See you later. Bye.